I decided on a career in landscape architecture quite early. My parents had a vacation property uh, kind of up in the Bruce Peninsula area of Ontario. So I'd always had been up there exploring the land. And, and so I had a grade 11 art teacher that really knew about landscape architecture at Guelph at the time, still is one of the only undergraduate programs in the country. So he had introduced me to landscape architecture at Guelph. So when I had applied to university, I applied to one program, one school. Uh, I've been a licensed landscape architect since 2009. And for me, it was uh, it was a great choice. I was always interested in creating spaces uh, that people can enjoy, draw influence from, create spaces that actually get built and shape people's lives. And and create experiences that bring people together. So yeah, I, I had known that since grade 11. Over the course of my 17 year career, I worked on a lot of creative and uh, interesting projects for me each design. They're often made up of dozens of intertwined narratives and stories all kind of braided together. More recently, we worked, our office worked on the redevelopment of uh, Waterloo Park. Laurel Creek and, and Silver Lake in Waterloo. It was a big, large park infrastructure project for our office. Uh, we had designed it over three years. It's a project that started pre-pandemic, worked through the pandemic and completed post-pandemic. My strategy and approach as a landscape architect was constantly changing while still trying to uh, work within that same municipal framework and design program. So the park, itself was about $11 million park uh, infrastructure renewal project. Uh, it involved the stormwater management strategies. We had reshaped creeks, dredged and reshaped uh, small lakes and stormwater management ponds, uh, it had ecology and biology, all types of engineering from structural, civil, uh, mechanical, electrical. Uh, there was green roofs and uh, public plazas and AODA compliance spaces, handrails. The challenge in this particular project for us, it was municipal budgets and stuff that were established pre-pandemic. You know, when you work your way through tendering and contract award during the pandemic, and it didn't really change the design of this particular project. We had always been designing to accommodate all types of users in all types of situations um, to, to really engage health and wellness. With each project, you know, the the demographics and the people and the materials and the hard and softscape and art, science and plants are all working together. And most of our projects require a unique and creative solution uh, to tackle you know, project specific design challenges. So creativity, you know, it encourages uh, and enables collaboration, discussions, mapping of solutions. It allows you to make changes to a design solution on the fly, sketching, developing ideas, carving up complete white space, always trying to find that best solution uh, that you can to create the best outcome for the project, for the community that you can. In 2006, you know, I don't remember learning about projects or discussing projects that, uh, like we do now, right? We didn't, we didn't talk green roofs and uh, equitable spaces and social justice projects and reconciliation, culturally important landscapes, affordability, adaptive reuse. Uh, you know, our office right now is working on uh, two projects where we're renovating old churches into affordable housing. So creating those strong partnerships with public housing authorities. And in this particular instance, part of these projects, there's still a portion of the church that functions as a true church would, but there's another, the other parts of the church are being renovated into affordable housing. And it's a big issue right now. And, and to know that we as landscape architects can be at the forefront of helping to tackle some of those issues and challenges or work as a, you know, part of a consulting team to, to deal with that is, very rewarding. For the first time in my career, I've been hired as a sessional instructor at the University of Guelph starting in September to teach the fourth year design studio. So it's my opportunity to help influence and shape some of the students that are that are going to be recent grads like I was all those years ago. So my advice would be, you know, to, to be humble, really never stop learning be open to new ideas and understand that when you graduate, you're likely uh, be 
big percentage of graduates are going to be entering offices or spaces or careers where they're they're working with professionals that have been practicing for decades and so soak in that experience and really learn from it always ask questions never be um, timid to reach out to other landscape architects and grow your knowledge base and and uh, you know we're always interested in conversation growing the profession working together but uh, I still do that to this day you know I still learn from recent graduates and I still learn from graduates that have twice as much experience than I do so it's always growing and learning and being open to new ideas and never stop educating yourself that's some of the the best advice I would give myself when I graduated.